Hi everyone, welcome to the presentation on delayed puberty and the specialist area of paediatrics. So a few questions to get you started in thinking about delayed puberty. So at what age is no breast development considered delayed puberty? Um, and if you watched the precocious puberty video, then you'll know that thelark is another term for breast development. So 13 years is the age at which thelark would be expected. And if you hadn't, if the child hasn't developed um, breasts before then, then you would be worried that there's something going on. So second question, what causes hypergonadotrophic hypogonadism? So hypogonadism, also a cause of delayed puberty, um, that can be split into primary or secondary. And hypergonadotrophic means that it's primary. So to break this down, and I'll go into a bit more detail, hypergonadotrophic means that you have a high um, gonadotrophin hormone level, but you have no gonadal development. So this primary problem means there's something going on um, in the gonads. So a cause would be premature ovarian failure. So yeah, the problem going is occurring with the gonads um, and the other two would cause hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism, which is a secondary hypogonadism. Don't worry, I'll go into a lot more detail and explain that a bit more. So next question, what does not cause delayed puberty? So there are so many causes that you would want to investigate, um, but one of these you can get confused. So Down syndrome does not cause delayed puberty, but a lot of other syndromes do. So these are a list. Um, Turner and Kleinfelter are chromosomal disorders, um, so you want to carry type for those. And those are more sort of syndromes, Kalman, Pride, Willie, and Newnam. Okay, so delayed puberty. So this is what um, we'll be going through today. What is it, symptoms and history, and then investigations, differentials, and management. Okay, so delayed puberty is when a person lacks or has incomplete development of sexual characteristics past a certain age. And this can be physical or hormonal. So these are a few um, causes. Constitutional delay is when it all occurs normally in the same order, um, but it's just a bit delayed. So that is probably the most common cause of delayed puberty and it's nothing to worry about as much as the others. So others include malnutrition, systemic disease, and then hypogonadism, which we went through a little bit earlier. Um, and we'll go into that in a bit more detail. So age limits, these are quite broad again. So 13, um, you'd want to expect breast development, menstruation by 16, um, and testicular growth by 14. So if none of these have occurred, then you would be thinking about delayed puberty and whether there's something going on underneath. Okay, so cause of delayed puberty. So as discussed, it could be a constitutional, also termed physiological delay. So this often comes with a family history and that's why taking history and asking the parents um, is really important. More common in boys and bone age, which you'd want to investigate, it will match the height, so there's a delayed skeletal maturation as well um, compared to the age of the child. So malnutrition or chronic disease, um, this is quite common, um, a common cause of um, delayed puberty. So an example of underlying disease would be these, and you'd want to screen for these and rule out anything more sinister going on when a child presents with delayed puberty. Also malnutrition, um, eating disorders, important to bear in mind and then excessive exercise. So athletes often um, experience delayed puberty um, and excessive stress on the body. It just means that the body will be a bit more delayed in developing. Primary failure of ovaries or testes. So um, for example, Turner's or Kleinfeld syndrome, ovarian testicular therapy, failure or chemotherapy. Or a defect in the hormonal pathway in puberty. So 
defects such as prader willi or Kalman, Kalman syndrome or hypopituitarism, um, Noonan syndrome, things like that. Um, a chronic disease, um, it's important to know, it will cause a delay in hypothalamus activation and the start of the hormonal signaling pathway in puberty. So that's kind of how that has an impact on puberty um, because all the other ones are quite direct to do with the hypothalamic pituitary axis. So symptom signs, there are quite a lot to look out for. And this is mainly to look for possible underlying causes, as I just discussed. Um, so constitutional or physiological delay is a diagnosis of exclusion. So you'd want to make sure that you've ruled out all of these. And these are just a few things you want to ask to try and find out possible causes. Short stature, um, that's important. And then absence of the developmental signs. So pubic hair, breast or testicular development, less than three mils. Again, in my previous video on precocious puberty, I went through how you'd want to look at the orchidometer um, and whether it's under a certain size, the testicles under a certain size. Um, so that's how you'd measure that. And then absence of menstruation as well. Uh, also, just to note that nevi are brown spots and these are quite characteristic for Turner syndrome. Okay, so history. Um, you want to take a complete family history. Uh, this is really important because it can run in families um, and you want to take into account the height of the parents and when they stop growing and when they hit their own pubertal milestones. Um, because they can give you an indication. Um, diet as well, as I've said, eating disorder or um, undernourished. Physical activity, um, so too much stress on the body. A serious illness, for example, cancer, or if they've gone through chemotherapy as well. Um, syndromes, which you're looking out for, are Kalman syndrome, Prod willi and Noonan. And then chromosomal ones are Kleinfelter and Turner. And then medication history and previous surgery as well could give you an indication okay so investigations i'll just go through one by one so height and weight and you want to compare this to the parents as well really important a full blood count including esr um, and serum fsh and lh this will assess hypogonadism as one of the possible causes of delayed puberty so the level of these hormones will assess the pituitary output. So if you have low levels of these, then this will mean there's no pituitary output, aka also termed the secondary hypogonadism or the hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism. Um, whereas high levels will suggest that the um, failure in puberty and development is coming from the ovaries and testicles. Um, as is, they're not responding to the high levels of these hormones. So that would be primary hypogonadism or hypogonad hypergonadotrophic hypogonadism. Um, I know it can be quite confusing. So just think of it as primary if these are high and secondary if these are normal or low. Um, actually quite specifically low. Um, yeah, I hope that makes sense. I'll go through it again, don't worry. <laughs> Okay, so estradiol, um, specifically for girls, so this will also assess the gonadal function. Um, so if there's um, primary ovarian failure, then this will be low. HEG stimulation test. So this is the one that you want to do for boys and it aims to stimulate the testicular production of testosterone. If there's a poor response, then this suggests primary hypogonadism. Um, but if it's the stimulation test is uh, caused a rise of testosterone, then it suggests there's a constitutional delay um, and it's just physiological. Um, thyroid function, as you want to look for hypothyroidism, as mentioned in the signs and symptoms, that can be a cause of delayed puberty. Imaging, again, the non-dominant hand x-ray to assess the bone age um, and you'll have a low skeletal bone age in constitutional delay um, okay and then this will specifically be the bone age will specifically be for like 12 13 years um, and then a brain MRI 
if the child is suggesting neurological symptoms such as the brain tumour um, and a pelvic ultrasound to assess for any anatomical, anatomical abnormalities or undescended testes perhaps or malarian agenesis. Okay, so again, this is going through what I've been trying to explain. Um, so primary failure, this is specifically for a male um, in the testicular axis, but also works for a female. So primary gonadal failure is where there's a problem in the gonads. So if you think about the primary source, um, so basically the main, the main bit that you want to see developing. So that's primary and the LH and FSH levels will be high, normal, um, but then the testicular size would be decreased, um, but for both of them they'd be decreased because this is um, delayed puberty anyway. So primary is hypergonadotrophic hypogonadism and these are the possible causes. Um, and then secondary, is where you have a problem occurring in the hypothalamic pituitary axis. So you're not producing that gonadotrophin releasing hormone, and then you'll have a low LH and FSH serum level. And then as a result, the um, testicular size would also be reduced. So this is hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism, and you're looking for sort of cause in the brain um, predominantly or it could just be constitutional delay, which haven't released yet. Um, yeah, so in summary, high LH and FSH suggests primary gonadal failure and low LH FSH suggests secondary. Um, I hope this makes sense. If it doesn't, just send me an email or look it up after this presentation as well. Um, but these can get quite confusing. So just focus on primary, secondary. Um, as that's clearer. Okay, so differential diagnoses, there are quite a lot. Right, so as you can see, delayed puberty has so many underlying causes um, which are listed here, um, and these are what you want to try and investigate and rule out before thinking that it's physiological. Um, so, a bit of revision as well of these syndromes because these are what may be first presentation of these syndromes um, that you'd see if they have delayed puberty and um, if it hasn't been picked up yet. Um, so Turner syndrome is where you only have one X chromosome and it's only in females. Kleinfelter syndrome is where you have an XXY only in males and they're sexually immature so it's primary hypogonadism. Um, Prada-Willi is where you have a chromosomal defect um, and this results in obesity and type 2 diabetes and it can affect males and females. Noonan is an autosomal dominant genetic disorder and has some characteristic facial features, congenital heart disease and skeletal abnormalities and this can happen in males and females. And then Kalman syndrome is specifically and characteristically a lack of smell and hypogonadism. But this gonadism is secondary because there's a lack of the gonadotrophin releasing hormone secretion. So that's just a little revision. Um, and there are other causes such as an imperforate hymen. Um, so yeah, bear in mind. Okay, so management, you want to reassure the parents if it's physiological and it's not damaging the child or severe. Vitamin A and iron supplements. Um, this is if it's quite severe or it's a distressing delay for the child or the parents. Um, you could give an estrogen or testosterone supplement um, as a low dose. If it's a systemic disease and you want to treat this, improve the diet, you could replace the hormones, um, give a growth hormone or HRT, which is the treatment for Kalman syndrome. And this is just a bit of summary. If you pause the video and go through this, um, just sort of investigations and what you'd expect from the results. So, final questions. At what age is no breast development considered delayed puberty? 13. Um, Hypergonadotrophic hypogonadism, so primary, is premature ovarian failure. And does not cause delayed puberty, it's Down syndrome. 
Okay. Thank you very much. Um, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank